Hi and welcome to this short demo on painting figures with watercolour. Now figures can be quite tricky with watercolours. There's kind of a few different techniques um, and I'm going to show you the technique that, that, that I usually use. Before I start I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what this painting is based on. Earlier in the year I was lucky enough to visit Cape Town in South Africa and had an absolutely fantastic time. I took this picture just um, as I was walking down the beach and caught some figures um, with a dog and I kind of thought it would make a rather nice little painting. So here we go. The first thing to do is to think carefully about the proportions. And the head is about one seventh or one eighth um, of the whole height of the figure. Look really carefully um, at that proportion. It's really common for um, people to make the head a little bit too big and that doesn't look too good. If you make it a little bit smaller, so if you make it uh, more than one seventh or maybe it's one eighth or one ninth, normally that will look pretty good. Firstly, I start by mixing the colors for the head, arms and legs. I'm using a really simple palette. I use cadmium red, um, mainly cadmium red, um, ultramarine blue, and a very tiny amount of cadmium yellow. We want to make a nice, rich, dark brown. Hopefully you can see the colour I'm mixing here. It's nice, kind of rich, ready brown um, to give the colour of the skin. And for the clothes, the same colours, except start with ultramarine blue, um, cadmium red and a small amount of cadmium yellow. Now, as you can see, I've just started to paint the head and I'm using that nice rich brown. Uh, oops, I've just made a mistake. I'll need to correct that and I'll just, what I'll do is I'll just um, move the head a little bit to the right. Um, you'll see, you'll see how I do that. Hopefully it'll work. It's best not to panic. So I'm just putting, he's got a little baseball baseball hat on, um, using the tip of the brush, and I'll now have to start to paint the um, painter's top. Now, just watch I do this arm. One quick brush stroke. What I'm trying to do is get, suggest movement. Very easy to try and put too much detail into the arms and legs, and they'll look very, very stiff. So, just blocking in the body, and now I'm doing the, his left arm. Look, one brush stroke down, his hand, and try not to then go back into it. Just nice brisk brush strokes. I'm using the more bluey grey that I mixed. That was the ultramarine, blue, cadmium red, and a little bit of yellow. I'm just blocking his shorts in. And I'm gonna be coming down to his legs. And watch again. I, I'm just a little bit more detail in his, in his top. Um, just also need to correct um, his head. Just bring the hat and head forward a little bit. And just dropping a little bit darker colour in. Now, his legs. We want to get movement. And the secret is just to use those brisk brush strokes, almost dry brush. One, two. A little mark for his foot. I'm just he's holding one of these devices for throwing throwing balls. I'll just put that in now and draw on the lead. Now the next bit will strike terror. Um, in in many in many painters' hearts, um, I'm painting the dog. The secret is just purely look at the shapes. Try to think. Try not to think dog. Try to think shape. Um, I'm just really had quite a brisk drawing, and I'm just looking at those shapes, blocking them in. It's best to squint to see those shapes. There we go. That's that's the dog almost done. I'll probably come back into it a little bit more later. But I'm going to go into the into the, the lady now, and I seem to be working from the um, shoulders and just just quick brush strokes for the arms. Try not to do too much. It's so tempting. I actually um, painted this um, twice um, before this demonstration, and so it, it's practice. Always practice. Um, now there's her dress going in, and I'm using the more bluey. Um, grey colour again. Um, quite nice brisk brush strokes again. Um, you notice that on the figure on the left and figure on the right, occasionally I leave the little um, dab of a little 
bit of white paper showing through. That's not on purpose, but it will happen. It will happen, and the thing to do is just allow that to happen. Try not to purposely do it, or it'll look too obvious, but occasionally you'll have the odd little chink of white showing through. Now I've just put the legs in, and I've almost finished. Now, as you can see, I've just started to come in and paint the background. And firstly, I need to explain the basic lighting. It's backlighting, and that has meant that the figures are therefore silhouetted. You've got this bright light coming across the water from the background, and it's shining on the water and giving this beautiful shimmery effect on the water that I wanted to catch. Now, I also wanted to catch the uh, sort of well-known effect that you get with backlighting, which is this kind of rim, rim lighting. It's almost like a halo that um, creates a kind of white, white line around the figures. It's tricky, this effect. You don't want to make it too obvious. You don't want to put a big, heavy, white um, effect all the way around. But just catch areas. If you'll notice how I'm painting, I'm leaving some little bits of white um, around the figures, and that will give that rim sort of halo effect around the figures um, and occasionally just by accident the brush is just catching the um, wet paint of the figure and there's a little bit of bleeding going on that's actually I think quite a nice little accident um, now as I move forward I'm changing the color um, I'm switching the color to a more of a sand color because in the distance it was the waves breaking um, and it's coming to the beach color uh, now the beach color is um, cabinet yellow and you'd be surprised, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, and a little bit of olive blue. <laughs> the same three colours that I've been using for the figures, just a really simple palette. And in the distance, I use the same mixture again, ultramarine blue, mainly, cadmium red, and a little bit of cadmium yellow to, to create that blue. Now, as I come forward, I'm going to warm that colour up um, and add a little bit more red into the mixture. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was the brushwork that I've been using for that background. You'll notice I've been dragging the brush from right to left or left to right and briskly brushing across and that's allowed bits of the rough paper to, to remain white so you get that shimmer effect. So it's, it's a technique that you do, in fact with a rough paper you don't actually need to have a very wet brush but with a smooth paper you will need to use quite a dry brush but with this paper it can be reasonably wet and you can just drag it across quite swiftly and you'll get that lovely shimmery effect. Now I hear you asking the question, what paper are you using? Well I'm using Saunders Waterford Cold Pressed 300 grams. So it's a, just a quite a nice uh, white paper with a really nice surface and Saunders Waterford is an artist quality 100% cotton rag paper which makes this kind of painting an absolute pleasure if you've been, if you enjoy this video I'd really recommend that you have a go at it um, it'll make um, painting these kind of effects so much easier and you can see I've just put in the shadows um, and some little reflections and it's important to connect those shadows with the feet you can see I've just just touched in where those shadows and reflections connect up. Um, now I'm just in the final stages. Um, I'm just using that warmer color that I said I'd used, um, that I would use in the foreground. Um, some more cadmium yellow and a bit more cadmium red, just to give it a nice sandy color. And you'll notice in the background also, while I was talking before, I put some darker color um, in the background to suggest the darker waves. Well, it'd be easy to overwork it, and I think I'm just going to stop there. So I think I've finished. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you fancy having a go at figures, please do. It's not as difficult as you think. It's just about giving that basic drawing in, making sure that your heads uh, are not too large, and try to use that lovely kind of brisk technique. And you'll find that even if the drawing isn't right, they'll take a character um, on by themselves so please have a go and the other thing I wanted to mention was to please subscribe to my channel um, I make or try to make uh, videos once a week and by um, subscribing you'll hopefully be able to 
enjoy the videos. So thank you very much and uh, we'll see you next time.